You should have seen me, guys. I was like, you know, those videos of chimpanzees trying to learn how to use a typewriter. I was like, mm. What is up, guys? Welcome back. We got the windows open. We're feeling the breeze. It's a lovely, cool, overcast morning. The birds are singing. I'm feeling like a prontoz. So we're going to be doing an updated version of my top shelf today. I'm going to be doing not just makeup. Last time it was just makeup and it was like a heave-ho crazy amount of makeup. I've been a lot more discerning lately about the makeup that I want to use and I have actual like things that I really, really love, new and old. And I'm also going to mention some things that have really risen to the top as far as skincare are concerned and a little bit of hair care. I went on my community tab and I asked you guys, I was like, okay, what would make favorites more useful for you guys? And it was two things. One, that favorites be something, like monthly favorites be something that is like beauty agnostic. Like, you know what I mean? You don't want to talk about beauty. You want to know about like lifestyle things and whatever because makeup is just this constant churn. But also that if I do update my favorites, my actual beauty favorites, that I include everything that I'm liking right now, not just new products that I've been trying. And so the main kind of takeaway there from a lot of you was that you would rather have updated versions of my top shelf video. And y'all really, really loved that video. Like I was so happy because I was like, how am I supposed to talk about the things that I'm genuinely reaching for all the time, even if they don't have some kind of catchy name that's going to be like searchable in the title? Because I'm always having to think about that kind of thing. It's like, how do you get eyes on a video you made? That's like the whole point, right? And you want to make it attractive to people. And a lot of times that means including reviews for things that people are searching for, right? But there's different kinds of videos and one very important kind of video is the kind that the people who are already here <laughs> want to see. The people who already are part of this community want to see and want to know about and so I did. I collected all my stuff and it's less. It's a lot less than last time and we'll go into why and everything but uh, yeah this is going to hopefully be something that I do every couple of months like every time I feel like there's a noticeable change in my routine and there's a big shift in my routine basically due to like the seasons and uh, and we'll just update my top shelf as as we see fit so let's go ahead and jump in and I do want to thank you guys for that feedback that's so helpful it's just so freaking helpful so let's start with some skincare this is not there's not that much I'm not gonna be going through my whole skincare routine and giving you like a tepid take on like everything like oh I still use the same face wash because meh you know what I mean it's not that these are the things that every time I use them I get excited I'm like I gotta talk about this I have to find a, a time to fit this into a video because I'm excited to share it so the first is this little combo right here this was sent to me by herbivore like I'm so lucky right I'm so fortunate to be able to try a lot of their new releases I have loved their vitamin C serum things like that so this is moon fruit I don't even know if this is new I think it might be new but this is their 1% bacuchiol plus peptides retinol alternative serum when I was pregnant I was using a lot of like retinol alternatives and they were so underwhelming <laughs> I was like there nothing beats retinol nothing beats actual retinol you know I need something that's going to like scorch my face and erase all of the damage that I've done with the sun and with picking and whatever and it also helps to keep adult acne at bay better than anything else for me. I mean, you know, I used to treat my acne and stuff with salicylic acid and things like that, but truly a retinoid is what kind of does the whole job for me. Well, I let this sit in the box for like a month probably before I reached for it because I already had retinoids in my routine. I have been using the one from Allies of Skin for a long time, the multi acids and retinol overnight sleeping mask, I think is what it's called, overnight brightening mask. And I don't know if your skin like gets used to stuff, but like that one just, it blew my mind at first. And then it just kind of didn't after a while. And I was like, okay, I guess my skin's just kind of like immune to whatever's in this. And I started using the moon fruit and I, I know that we get like tired of hearing these kinds of things, but it was one of those things where I woke up the next morning and I was like, okay, like that's a noticeable change. I saw the blemishes on my face really, really flatten out and heal without being over dry. It wasn't like they were uh, angry and dehydrated. It was just like everything sort of smoothed out. No irritation at all. It's this like purple cream basically, you know? And I get excited to use it 
because it makes a difference. Do I know if this helps? I have no idea. This came with it. This is the Phoenix Facial Oil. I'm gonna be totally honest. I just like using it. It's kind of bookends of my routine. Start with this, do all my moisturizer and everything, and with this, and there have been so many skincare items that I have been testing lately, and these are the ones that, well, this is the one, the moon fruit. Like, you don't have to go, you know what I mean? This is the one that I can truly put a stamp of, not just approval, but like, I'm impressed. <laughs> I am impressed with the results of this, especially being a non-actual retinol, it's a Baku gel. It's actually strong, and it actually does beautiful, beautiful work in refining and brightening and smoothing my skin overnight. It's really lovely. I wanna thank Herbivore for sending me this and for also, you know, putting me on their PR list and letting me try so many of these things. But like this one, I don't use the word holy grail very often. This is a game changer. You just notice the difference. And so that is, that is a huge one for me. The other one is, it's another one of those kind of combos where one is the heavy hitter and the other one's kind of the companion. But you guys know I've been shopping on Typology lately because they came out with their lip oils, which I'm super into. This popped up on Typology and it was like, do you want to try this? And I'm so impressed. If you're unfamiliar with Typology, they're a French skincare brand and their stuff is pretty affordable. I think this combo was $58 for both of these things and they had me at natural self tan. <laughs> it's like, what? If nothing else, I'll put it in a fail video kind of thing. But this is the, this is the main one, right? This is the DHA 10% plus carob pulp extract. It's called Lab 1021. And it is just this little bottle right here. And it's got this fluid in here that you either put on your skin before all your skin or you mix it in with your moisturizer and can attest to the fact that there is like actual, even though it's, you know, carob, there is actual effective self tanner in here. And I used it for a couple of days, it kind of being like, well, I guess we'll see, you know? And I don't typically use self tan at all because I exfoliate so much. I'm just like, well, it's not gonna be worth it. It's gonna be really patchy. Yesterday, I think it was day two or three in a row that I had used this overnight and it was the first day where I like woke up, looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I don't want to wear makeup. I look healthy. I don't feel like I have anything to accomplish Be between the moon fruit and my skin being all clear. I'm also ovulating. So, you know, I take that into consideration. Like my cheeks were hopefully flushed. I'm looking very like fertile, right? This gives you this incredibly subtle glow that's not makeup. <laughs> Cause I did, don't worry. I did just order the makeup by Mario on the skin enhancer cause it looks awesome. I'm excited to try that because it's not really a foundation. It's kind of just this like healthy looking glow bronzy sort of thing, you know? But this does something where it just so subtly self tans my face to where I feel like, I mean, you can see in the application footage, I've overdone it. I did it maybe like one or two days too many. And like that to me says it's effective, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm always testing things, right? And you can see there's kind of a contrast between my face and my neck before I get all my makeup on. But that just means to me that I can use it, you know, every other day, not that often. It's not something I have to maintain all that often. And it makes me more confident without makeup on because it just kind of evens my skin tone out. It doesn't look like I'm trying to change my skin tone. It doesn't look like I'm tan, 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 but it just sort of makes my freckles look a little more at home. It kind of makes the, the contrast in the sallow a little bit more camouflaged underneath a healthy warmth. And I'm really, really digging that. And you wear that at night, and this is, you know, their companion product. Again, I think this is more cosmetic, but this is the Plantase. Ranch. Uh, 1006 and it is a botanical blend with Buriti. I'm pretty sure Buriti is what is like the bronzer colored ingredient in like the RMS bronze, they call it the Buriti bronzer. I just think it's either a maintenance product or maybe it has a touch of like an actual, yeah. It has like a touch of an actual color to it, like a little bit of like a natural golden sort of haze that when you put this on your skin, it gives the appearance of being tan. 
a little bit. And so those kind of like subtle adjustments in my nighttime and daytime like morning skincare routine I just noticed that I put less makeup on or no makeup at all because I'm like, oh, I like the way that my skin looks. Like I look healthy, I look rested, I look like I spent a little bit of time in the sun. I wear SPF on my face absolutely religiously and so I, even if my skin gets a little bit of like a nice glow to it on my body, my face never does. And so I do feel like sometimes that makes me want to put makeup on in the morning to fix that because everything looks so just like blinked out. Blinked out? bleached out and blanked out on my face and this covers the distance in a way that I, I like I don't have to put makeup on at all if I don't want to so those are my skincare things I thought that that was going to be quick but it wasn't because it's me this will be quick hair care again some of these things I'm going to be in the process of testing that doesn't necessarily mean that they are like holy grail status it's more so that like this is the thing I keep reaching for because so far it's working really well and it is the living proof perfect hair day advanced clean dry shampoo I've had this a little over a week now and it says actually cleans hair and adds softness and shine I'm on day two I usually shampoo my hair every day I know that that's not anything like groundbreaking because most people are going like a week without shampooing their hair I don't do that because my hair doesn't like that I don't have a whole lot of hair but like this is the only thing I have in my hair right now and it's giving it all this like really lovely volume and the whole thing where it's like actually cleans hair I don't know the science there but my hair does feel cleaner clean enough that it's not all stuck to my head, clean enough that I feel confident being on camera with my hair down. And again, I like the smell. It smells like a really nice, like a eucalyptus mint kind of combo. I really, really dig this. Oh, I also used this for the first time today. I was sent this either by Ilya or by my affiliate company, Howl through Ilya, I'm not totally sure, but this is their new C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. I don't have final thoughts on this yet, but it did pill like crazy for me. So, and the, like it actually, like it was just, I put it on my neck where I don't have other things, I don't think, or maybe I do, but it had soaked in. And even there, it felt like the product itself pilled up. So we will, we will keep trying. I'm in such a lilac mood right now. Also, I have two babies that have not sold yet, so if y'all are interested, follow Khaki Carmody on Instagram. That's where I post my art. Okay, makeup! And this is not, there's not much in here. <laughs> my, my Thrive Mascara, duh. Um, yeah, obviously, you know. Thrive Mascara, it's my tubing mascara of choice. You guys did say that you really, really like the spreadsheets. I also like that the spreadsheets don't take anybody's time up. So it's like if you just glaze over when you see a spreadsheet, you can just watch the video and you don't have to look at the spreadsheet. So like, I don't get any complaints. You know, it's such like a self-elected thing to go and look at a spreadsheet that I think it's kind of a great solution. And I have had requests now from multiple people to do a best and worst with a spreadsheet for tubing mascaras. It's gonna take me a while to hunt them down. They're hard to get your hands on. They'll be listed places, but they're like hard to find actually, like in real life, the drugstore ones especially. And I probably need to like repurchase some of them, like the one from Blink and stuff like that, so that I can get live swatching footage for you guys, because I have chucked those since then. So that's on its way, but it's going to take a while. Okay, next, I'm not gonna go in any particular order here, but this is blossoming from Carewise, and this is like the one right now, especially on top of tan skin, especially on top of like the sheer foundation look and just wanting that lovely like summer, bright, healthy, with like a little tiny bit of glow to it. This is so funny because they keep kind of like re-releasing it or talking about it as such like a summer hue that people have actually been sending it to me because it's like, you know, if you are just now kind of on the Kierwise wagon, it, you might think it's new. You can't really be blamed for that. They're promoting the crap out of it. And I, I tell people, I'm like, I own it. I use it all the time. And it's so, it's so pretty. It is like the closest thing to a hot pink that I can wear because it's got kind of this like peachy shift to it a little bit and I love to top other things off with it because it does pack quite a saturated juicy punch and it also leaves a little bit more of a natural skin texture on top of powder and things like that. Their 
products kind of run the gamut for me. Some of them are amazing, some of them are, are not. The fragrances really get in the way sometimes for me, but I'm pretty sure it's like unanimous that their hero products are their cream cheeks and this color is knocking it out of the park for me right now it really makes me look so healthy and it's the one that again i just can't put down i can't put away it's like in the winter time when i just could not stop using flirtatious from pat mcgrath because i felt like every look needed it that's how i feel about this this will be no surprise to anybody it's just regular mac fix plus but i did want to you know draw the distinction here because i did try the whoops the magic radiance and I could take it or leave it. It's a little bit much and I feel like it actually takes away from the wear time for my makeup more so than the Fix Plus and I just really like the finish of the Fix Plus. So it's just been the regular Fix Plus for me, nonstop. Shocking, I know. Here's something new and I'm working on a video right now. I'm, again, hunting them all down, but I'm working on a video of cream bronzers. I have so many. I've got the Say one, I've got both of the Chanel ones, I have the New Rose Ink, I just ordered that one from Makeup by Mario, which I'm not sure really counts as a cream bronzer, and then I cannot for the life of me seem to locate the fair shade of Charlotte Tilbury. I even emailed my my contact that sent me some skincare because I have, I did just receive a whole thing of Charlotte Tilbury skincare, so the magic cream and stuff. And I'm like, hey, are you planning on sending out the bronzers? Because I cannot find this shade. Like I would buy it, but I cannot find it in stock anywhere. Even a viewer yesterday told me about kind of a more like small website that just started carrying Charlotte Tilbury and they were like, it's in stock. The fair shade is in stock. I caught that comment within an hour and I went to that website and it was already sold out. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so yeah, I plan on getting it, but I just, I can't get my hands on it right now. Either way, this is the one that I have used the most lately and the one that I'm gravitating the most towards lately. And this is in Laguna 01, it's the NARS one. And it's just like the right amount of super fair and a little bit more neutral than the other ones that I've that I've been trying. It is still a bronzer and not a contour, but between the shade, the amount of pigment and also the really beautiful hybrid finish. It goes to a powder finish on the skin, which I, most of these do. I really, really enjoy this one so far. And I just, I like just the, you know what I mean? It still feels luxurious, but it's a very like streamlined package. It feels very essentialist. You know, it's like, hey, we care that you like interacting with this, but it does, it's, it's no greater than the sum of its parts. Like this, the rose ink one, pardon me while I have like my 15th aside of this video. How am I, what am I supposed, how? how, oh, 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 this strange piano shape unscrews for just absolutely inexplicable reasons. I don't, I don't know, guys, I don't really get it. Like, the product's fine, you know, and I'm being ridiculous, obviously, but this is, this, you should have seen me, guys. I was like, you know, those videos of chimpanzees trying to learn how to use a typewriter, I was like, mm this thing so yeah the other blush powder blush that I keep reaching for is this one this is the Wayne Goss weightless veil blush palette in sweet wildflower and this shade is called dusty rose again we're in like summertime and this is just this really really nice bronze leaning slightly shimmery sheer pink and it's just it's just right you know it's a, it's a funky, weird, hard to pin down kind of in between shade, but what results from that is that I'm pulling one powder blush instead of five, you know? And it's just a funky, weird shade and I like it. So that is what I have on my cheeks today, topped off with blossoming from Kirwise. And in terms of my foundations, it's just been one of these two, depending on how much coverage I want. So it's like MAC Face and Body in and one if I want something a little bit more perfected. Somebody asked me, one of my like long time viewers, asked me what the difference is between this and the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. And I was like, dang girl, they're actually so similar, except this has like 20 times as much coverage. But other than that, they're so similar. <laughs> And that's probably why I like it so much as it feels so familiar to me. So especially even just the package is the same one, basically. So it's either been this or shocking again, I know, the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer Natural Skin Illuminator Broad Spectrum SPF 25 Sunscreen. I have it in OW1 Pearl and it just, it just does the trick. 
it it's just enough it's just enough where you can like see my freckles through it it has this lovely kind of like blurring refractive quality and it's so lightweight because it's not a mineral sunscreen and so it's like I mean, when I powder it, it still it feels weightless. It doesn't have any like dewy moisture that it leaves on my skin, but it looks really healthy. And I think that's why I keep reaching for it is just because it's so weightless and it looks so good. <laughs> so yeah, been absolutely loving this, still loving it. The only concealer I've been reaching for lately is my Item Beauty, mainly because it's a complexion match for me and it does such a good job of just disappearing into the skin. Is the packaging perfect? No, I don't understand why it's so nasty. Like what causes a component to do this? And I do, I clean it, but like it's just kind of everywhere and it's gross. I don't know. And I'm usually a very like tidy makeup user, mainly because most of my stuff only sees a couple of like hits a month, unless it's this video or something that I'm using all the, all the, all the time. It doesn't really get like destroyed like this, but this thing is definitely like, it looks like a, a normal makeup bag kind of makeup item. Like I have stripped all of the irides iridescence, the chrome off of that. And it's like, it's really dirty and nasty. And when I finish it, I'll repurchase it because I like it so much and it's in the shade 110. Yeah, this is the Item Beauty Air Hug Concealer. $18 at Sephora. It's phenomenal. This is one that I am trying, okay? But I've worn it every single day since that review because I love <laughs> these boring freaking colors over here. I. Well, I mean, you know, I like the glitter, it's fun, but like to have this large of a selection over here, in addition to the excitement, to have this large of a selection of warm, neutral, and cool, brown, beige, cream, uh, dusky tones, I just have so much fun with it. And I know that's like a, it's a silly thing to have fun with, but it be, it's just so darn useful. I am wearing only this as my eyeshadow today and it's really like all just these that's all it is and like you know maybe a little bit of this guy on my brow bone but it's like these just shades that honestly if you kind of like squint they all look the same but they're not <laughs> they add so much like dimension and everything and i'm so fair that they actually have a lot of contrast on my skin. I don't know if I would say that this like won't work on deep skin tones, but like this being the deepest shade, like yeah, m most skin tones are going to be able to get contrast from that, but I'm still not sure it's going to have like the super rich uh, shadow building effect on every single skin tone. Like this, my, I kind of searched after I reviewed this to see if they had two colorways in this because sometimes NARS does that. And I guess they made the decision and I saw swatches on deeper skin and stuff like that. I guess they made the decision that this was like enough for everybody. But I would say this is probably a light to medium skin tone oriented palette or even medium to deep but not for dark skin i it's i just don't think it's going to like blow your mind and you'll probably be able to use about two-thirds of the palette but like you know like these kinds of shades up over here are not going to probably like be as useful to you as they are to me kind of thing you know so i just want to um give advisement and give context wherever possible. It's like when I think something is great or when I think something is great specifically for me kind of thing. And the fact that I said I wanted to buy it for Hannah, like Hannah's even paler than I am, that kind of speaks volumes. I had to change my battery. <laughs> also, I had to sew a button back on this dress and all I had was black thread, so <laughs> don't mind me being messy. <laughs> Anyway, talk about not new, but totally just like impressing me and I can't stop reaching for it. You guys have seen this probably in every single video recently since I got this at the last Sephora sale. This is a Natasha Denona Contour Sculpting Powder in 01 Light. It's just great. It's just a great little contour powder. It's like the perfect color for me. Do you see that? You know what I mean? It's like just far enough away from my natural skin tone that it makes a believable shadow, which is all I really want from a contour. And lately I have been more in a mode of using predictable textures together where it's like, I want to use powder, 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 and then like top with a little bit of cream, but it's made me kind of deviate a little bit more from using the Patrick Ta that I, well, I mean, 
she might not be top shelf, but she's not being neglected, you know, I'm still using this, but I think that it's more that I've kind of, who knows why, a mood change, but I've kind of switched to cream bronzer powder contour versus cream contour powder bronzer. That's all. It, you know what I mean? It's not even necessarily something that I would landmark with a, a reason. It just kind of happened. So yeah, those are the ones that I have been reaching for lately. And then of all the milk makeup bionic products and they've got the bionic bronzer the bionic blush and they have the bionic glow the bionic glow is the winner okay what i want on my skin is either a really beautiful kind of like satin finish that doesn't reflect light and it doesn't absorb light it's like right in between or i want to control the glow I want some glow on my lips. I want some glow on the top of my cheeks. You know, I want uh, a nice, really even finish that I'm able to get with the, the MAC Fix Plus when I finish my makeup kind of thing. This, I've, uh, I've talked myself blue in the face about it. Not only is it a, like a really nice kind of like non iridescent highlighter, but it makes the skin look really smooth, but it dries down. So it's not a greasy or balmy or dewy or tacky kind of product. It just smooths and I kind of like, it sort of self levels. I, I apply it with a cream blush brush on top of what I'm working with, or you can do it underneath too. And it does have color to it. So I wouldn't consider it to be a, like a universal complexion product kind of thing where you, you know, mix it with your foundation necessarily, unless you want a little bit more of like a peachy pink in your foundation that personally would give me pink face. So I think it works really beautifully as a nice, like finishing touch. It complements without stealing color away from my blush. That's a pet peeve of mine is when I put a highlighter on and then that spot on my face is now white <laughs> or icy. It destroys the illusion, right? It disrupts where your eye is is going. This doesn't do that and it adds back some of the most beautiful non tacky like skin finish to my skin and every time I see it it's kind of like I had that Marie Kondo thing where I'm like I feel happy feelings. This sparks joy. So this sparks joy. This sparks joy. <laughs> I can't stop using this. It's dark in here. My goodness. I think it's gonna rain. And good, good for them. Good for them. You can see it's humid outside. My hair is like curling before your very eyes. So uh, yeah, this is just the Kosa's cloud set. And I, you know, you can see she used to be a dome and now she is flat. And that's because I love her so much. In fact, she's, she's a little bit dipped in. And I love my bite too, but like <laughs> bites going out of business and that makes me really sad. But also I like this better than the bite. It does blur in a real, I mean, just the best way underneath my eyes. Even when I have that like contrast between my concealer and my blush, I don't even try and blend it all that much. I just use something like this and it's just, you know, and I apply this with my little like Wayne Goss O2 brush here, but that is O2, right? But this thing has been extinct. I don't understand what happened, but there is a hold please. Oh, me trying to get organized. There is a BK Beauty brush that is very comparable and I use them kind of interchangeably. And this is the BK 108. So if you are always looking at me using this one and you're like, but I can't get it. Um, BK 108 and there's a BK 10% off underneath all of my videos. So anyway, yeah, that's what I typically do. And I only apply it kind of where I want to stop the light from reflecting in a weird noticeable way, kind of around here. And it has a brightening effect, but not it's not super noticeable. I feel like that's the best thing about this finishing powder is that it's not super noticeable. It just kind of does its job and then backs away. I watched Kelly Gooch obsess over it too and I felt very validated. I trust her taste and she does really go a lot towards like drugstore. And so the fact that this is not drugstore priced and she still is just like, this is, worth it you know that that speaks volumes to me so yeah this is a this is a big favorite for a lot of people for a lot of reasons and it comes in a lot of shades which is great all right and finally we have two lip products so the first is the typology and i have the other one in my bag i actually just went and got to have a glass of wine with stephanie from beauty unhyped over the weekend and we were talking about like how much fun these are but um she also gave me the 
Spritz palette from Viseart and I gave her the Batman lipstick from House of Siage because she's such a lipstick queen. So anyway, we had a great time. That is why the other one is in my purse is because I brought it to that wine date with me. And this is, that one is the powder pink that actually goes a little bit peach. And then this is the plum purple, I want to say. Yes. So these are only like, I think $23, $24, something like that. And you get, you get half an ounce of, of lip pro what? Half an ounce of lip product? That's ridiculous. That's amazing. You never get a half an ounce of lip product. So not only is it a great deal, but it's just such a pretty product with pretty colors. Like that's just so pretty and it's enough pigment that it really shows up. And I feel like it sets off a look and I want all of them. They, it really won't be long before I end up ordering all of them because I really like them so much. And they're real nourishing. They're very, very, like just very well executed, unassuming, pretty products. And I don't think they have a scent, but they smell subtly sweet. Love them. And then this is just the one, this is the one that I'm wearing right now. This is the Victoria Beckham Posh Gloss in Bikini. And it is where my mind goes, but also very satisfying when I have like, you know, expectations versus reality when I apply it of just wanting a sexy, nude, glossy lip. And she has a ton of shades. The other one, Poolside, I would say is like this, but for medium to deeper skin tones because it's still got that awesome, like, grungy beige to it, but it's going to be, you know what I mean? Less like milky on darker lips kind of thing. This is the ideal milkiness for me where it complements a look that's very neutral, like the one that I'm wearing right now without overwhelming anything, but it still makes my lips look super healthy. I'm not getting any of that white thing. I've been talking for like a better part of an hour probably. And a lot of times you'll get that like white ring, that crud, and it doesn't do that, which is kind of uh, a signifier of like a liquid lip balm to me when it doesn't do that mucky thing. And it doesn't behave like a Rowan liquid lip balm necessarily, but it's also longer wearing than a lot of those really slippy lip balms. That's the one thing that I don't love about those is that like, you know, I've, I've talked about this, but like the Fit Glow, they're pretty, but like when they talk about, oh, we added ceramides and we made like an overnight treatment. It's not an overnight treatment to me because it doesn't last long enough for that. You know, I think that we're kind of reaching a little bit there. And so call it what it is. It's a beautiful lip gloss. And this is even longer wearing than that. It's like halfway in between that like Rowan formula and a Pat McGrath Lust Gloss because it's still giving me that like, what in the world is going on? It's giving me that glassy finish. It's giving me a lot of like healthy, juiced up, plumping it doesn't have any plumping properties to it i don't think at least nothing that like you can smell or feel it does not have a scent it comes in glass and the colors are great they're great they're really really pretty and if you aren't interested in the colors they also have a clear that's very very pretty so this is the one that I just continue to reach for. This I think is one of those products where if, you know, I lost my entire makeup collection and I had to rebuy everything, this would be the one that I would buy first because it's like, I would wear it with everything. You know, you can, I, you can, I can wear a lip gloss like this that kind of matches your skin, but kind of enhances everything a little bit. It looks so effortless, but it looks so put together at the same time. It's really comfortable. It's long wearing, it's nourishing. This would be something that I would repurchase immediately. And that's it guys. That's my top shelf. That is not to say that, you know, the other stuff that I have kind of cycled out of my top shelf is like a reject now and I'm over it. It's just like the seasons changed and it makes me think differently about the textures I want on my skin, but also the colors that I want on my skin. And I want to kind of like lean into this little bit of like warmth on my skin a little bit more. And I liked the coolness and sort of the complexity of, uh, you know, a more blush draped thing in the winter time and stuff. So I'm wearing my blush a little higher, not so much that kind of ruddy fjords thing, I guess. And my eyebrows are a little bushier. I kind of want to look a little bit more wild. Yeah, it's probably imperceptible to you, but uh, I it's, it's just the vibe that I've been leaning into. So that is my current top shelf. Let me know down below if this video still resonates with you guys, if this is useful content for you. Always want to make it useful for you. And, uh, and also any other ideas that you guys have for potential 
projects and large videos for spreadsheets and things like that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one, which might be a non-beauty favorite, so stay tuned. Bye.